Hello SimHub users, this is the ninth video on a series of using Dash Studio in SimHub. In this video we're going to cover graphical components on your dashboard like rectangles and shapes, images, and toggle images. We'll start with the simplest of those, the rectangle, and that is here under the toolbar on the left, and we get a simple rectangle with uh, borders of two. We've seen how to change those in the past. I can make this border thicker. I can change its color. These are useful when you are maybe combining elements graphically on your dashboard, like the amount of fuel left in your tank, along with how many laps of fuel are remaining, along with how many minutes of fuel are remaining. Maybe you'd want to surround all of those inside of a box like this, a rectangle. We can also get to circles with this if we change our radiuses of our circles. Let's pick a round number like 200 for our width and our height. And then if I change my radiuses to, will 100 do it? Right. If my radius is half of my length and width, then we're going to get a perfect circle here. Or if we wanted a rounded square, we would choose a number less than that, and we could get shapes like that. So that's a simple rectangle. I'll delete that and move on to an image. If I choose an image from my toolbar on the left, it's just going to give me an empty box. That's because there is no image in it. Now there is built-in images within SimHub, and so if I click on this click to pick image inside of the Properties Explorer and go to the Common Library, here's where I'm going to find things that have already been created by the developer of SimHub, and I can use those, but more often than not you're going to want to put in your own images. And you do that up here in the Images tab on the top right of the Components Explorer. And you can either paste an image, you can copy an image from online and paste it in here, or if you already have the image file, you can add it this way. I have three images that I'm going to put into this dashboard. This fuel red icon, this fuel white icon, and finally the Porsche logo. Let's put the Porsche logo on our dashboard. So I'll go back to screen and with this image item selected, click to pick image. Now I want to use my dashboard library. These are any of the images that I've added to it. So I'm going to choose this Porsche logo. Now this worked out well, but sometimes you are putting in an image that is a lot wider or a lot taller. And so when you put in an image, it looks stretched or skewed. There's no way to constrain this box automatically to the dimensions of your original image. I know that if you were to say paste an image into PowerPoint, you could hold down shift while you are dragging these handles and it keeps it proportioned, but that doesn't work here. So you need to either get out your calculator and use a multiplier of the size or match perfectly the width, width and height of the image that you're bringing in. Also, let's change the name of this to Porsche logo, and we will put that right here on our dashboard. The last graphical component that we'll talk about today is the toggle image. And just like the image, when I bring that in, it's going to just show me an empty box. The difference here is that toggle images have an off image and an on image. For my off image, I'm going to use this white fuel icon. And for my on image, I'm going to use my red fuel icon. The idea is that this is going to be white unless I am less than 10% of the fuel in my tank remaining. And then I want this to appear red. Now we can manually do that by checking this checkbox under value. And you can see that's changing from my off image to my on image. But to do this automatically, I need to bind some code to this value property. So I'll click on this value function and choose computed value. And we'll use ncalc here with a simple if statement. The way that if statements work in ncalc is similar to how if statements work in Microsoft Excel. You do them all in one line. If we were using JavaScript, 
then we could have multiple lines of code with curly brackets. So we're going to start this with if, and then we're going to give this if statement three arguments. The first argument inside of the parentheses is going to be a conditional expression. And that conditional expression can evaluate to true or false. So we mentioned that we want this toggle image to turn to red if the fuel is less than 10% remaining. So I'm going to insert a property here and type in fuel to find all of the properties associated with fuel. And here we have this game data fuel percent, which is currently at 56%. So I'm fine. And right now this image would appear as white. But if this number were to go under 10, under 10%, then we'd want the red image. So I'm going to choose this particular property, but we're not through with our conditional expression. We're going to say if that value is less than 10, then we put in a comma. And so if that is true, if the fuel is less than 10, we want this to return true. Otherwise we want it to return false. The true and the false is going to reference whether or not that checkbox, if you can think of it that way, for the toggle image is checked or unchecked. I'll click on OK. And now we have this in green, meaning that we have some code bound to this value property. And in my replay, I know that my fuel is going to remain above 10%, so I won't be able to demonstrate it. But once that fuel percent goes below 10 and you were running your dashboard, you would see this icon here turn to red.